Friday interactive uh, Juma night, Thursday night and we pray that uh, anybody who have questions that uh, if they're not answered here and they're of a personal nature we don't bring it on onto the air and it has to be a question that's that's applicable for people and applicable for people is help me at nurmuhammad.com and always the advice that keep giving is from all of these teachings. If you don't have what's being described of these realities and you don't have it within you that you think you can achieve those realities, the easiest way to achieve them is by khidmat. So that's something that tariqahs have an immense ocean of mercy. If you don't think you can achieve these stations, these realities, this support of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin because of the, the level of the uloom and the knowledges they teach. One to give us an understanding of the greatness of what Allah has put upon this creation and two about the immensity of these haqqaiqs and realities. If we don't think that we're going to achieve those right away and we're capable of achieving it the tariq comes and says, no you can achieve it by your khidmat and your service, by spreading the links, by putting the posts, by doing all of these actions that they week after week inspire this group of people to be active so that their tariqah is real for them, their actions are real for them, they're participating to spread the da'wah of the shaykh. If they believe in that shaykh and they're following the teachings of that shaykh and they want to participate in the ni'mat of what the shaykh is teaching then spread his teaching. Don't spread your teaching, don't spread yourself, you'll make yourself too thin. Spread the teachings of the shaykh, don't try to promote yourself, promote the shaykh. When you do the, the actions correctly every blessing begin to dress upon you and you become a reflection of the shaykh. And we know for 25 years what we did and we know how that worked and, and who we are a reflection of, of these haqqaiqs because of that life and because of that service. And anyone who wishes to follow on that train then alhamdulillah there's so many opportunities, take the book, put the links. Take the articles, put the links, take the video, put the links, go to the charity site, put the links. If Allah gave you support, if Allah gave you an ability, right, whatever Allah gave to His creation then participate so that all day and night we think that we are together, we are a team and we're all doing the best that we can. And if you look around not many are doing anything. They go travel around spreading fitna, lies and deceit but it's better to propagate knowledges and realities, not travel around spreading fitna. This way is based on the proof in the pudding that you follow. These are all the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad look how many videos are being put out, all fresh content, nobody's reading from anyone's book. This is all from the heart of awliyaullah, mind nothing, I'm nothing. But this knowledges that come from their heart, that's what people are supporting. You're supporting these knowledges, you support, look at all these books, you spread them out. Look at the articles, spread them out. Watch the, the YouTube, spread them out. These are all the spreadings of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that's what brings the blessings, that's what brings the immensity of, of lights and, and connections. InshaAllah Allah bring more and more people, give them istiqam and firmness and give them a hikmah, a hikmah in which to achieve and want to do and want to achieve these realities that are being presented. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shahid Ya Rasulullah Kareem, Ameen. What we got for questions inshaAllah? Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum dearest Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Thank you for your life changing guidance. Can you please help me understand the reality of the nuqt? Forgive me for my ignorance. 
Yeah, we can go online inshaAllah, we can't give another sobat within the sobat and it does become deep, deep subjects. So inshaAllah those we have online the, the articles on the note and just a, a quick summary of, of the understanding is to be nothing. Well the other numbers are a manifestation and from 1 to 9, 9 being the largest number because single digit numbers, 11 is a 1 and a 1 and is reduced to 2. 9 is the largest number and represents the immensity of power and annihilation and what produces the nuqt is the oceans of nothingness that the shaykhs are drawn into these powers and by the sultans that represent this nine, the energy, the fires, the teachings, this immensity of this reality keeps dressing these servants to become nothing. That's why the talk, as much as you're trying to make yourself something, you're going opposite of your nuqt and their job is to continuously try to pull people back towards their reality. That's why the reality is to enter the ocean of nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing so that they can achieve something from Allah's Divinely Presence. If they don't achieve something from that Divinely Presence then whatever they think they are it becomes just an empty shell, it's nothing there. The station of nothingness in which the servant draws to be nothing, to be nothing, to be nothing, they can begin to reflect the reality and that's what's important and that's what Allah has given to them as a mission is to teach these realities, teach people how to enter in this busy and crazy dunya, how to take a path of nothingness. And if they take that ocean of nothingness then the one can begin to appear to them. And that's when we described in all these months, all these talks, if you're nothing this one will begin to appear to the servant. But as soon as you make yourself one, you look out to the Divine and you say, there's nothing there. That's why the very big-headed people who think they're really great, really intellectual, really smart, they see nothing. But the people who entered into the teachings of the shaykh to be nothing, they see the one in everything. They see Allah in everything and they see the greatest mercy and the greatest love of Allah in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that they have to run to that reality because that is creation. You can't run to Allah you have to run in His creation, you have to ponder His creation, you have to be busy in the ocean of creation and the only Peace in creation, the only light in that creation of that reality is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad which reflects Allah's Divinely lights inshaAllah. But that can only be achieved by being nothing inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Sayyidi, what is the reality of quantum computers? We already have those, <laughs> yeah quantum computer. We have all, all of that in the talks of, of the computers and binary code and, and uh, all, all those realities that are coming out and one big quantum computer on Burnaby in uh, Vancouver area that they're using uh, quantum computing and they're u using uh, a coding that not only binary coding but they're using a reality of one and nine and many different realities in the quantum uh, computing understandings. But the main thing is that these computers and these devices are the jinn world trying to overtake humanity. That the more hu humans are attached to their world, these computers, these chips, these technologies is from their world. The more they introduce their world into this world is to enslave humanity so that they are locked on to this jinn rea reality and, and this is the armies and the 
the tribes of Dajjal and he's a jinn. So already his, his hands are everywhere, his devices are everywhere, their reliance is on everything. All of mankind relies and breathes and eat with these devices and their technologies. So the, the gist of what's happening is that this is the signs of the Dajjal. When he and his jinn nations would overtake humanity and they're not coming for goodness. I watched one of these alien things and the guy was saying, oh they're coming for goodness and they're not bad entities, what are you talking about? There's nothing, they're not coming for any goodness, they're coming to enslave humanity and to destroy. The kingdom of Allah is, is complete opposite of their understanding. So this is a Dajjal system that meant to enslave and to destroy humanity and the kingdom of Allah is coming on to earth. And we pray that Allah empower His kingdom and, and give their permission. The more that the Dajjal want to show themselves then the moment they show themselves and show their jinn states and make their disclosures then the, the agreement for them is off. And as a result Allah will empower those of His servants whom He wishes to empower and then their battles begin. Right now they are to remain hidden. If they break their covenant and want to begin to show themselves then they are perishable. As a result they will live and die. So that becomes big battles with shayateen and jinn nations and uh, humanity. So all of these are tremendous signs of the Dajjal authority on earth with all his devices and his computing and supercomputing that are using powers that are, are coming from outside of the earth understandings. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Can demons use the dunya mirror as a portal to the spiritual realm and should we avoid to look in the mirror? The physical mirrors. It's not something like that, that the, the teaching from mirroring is, is a reflection understanding, then the reality of the actual mirror is something different. But it's not a portal in which not to look at mirrors because then many people will be very disturbed all day long, scared of mirrors. But why people are scared of mirrors is a different question. So there's not a portal for demonic activity but people are scared of mirrors because they reflect a reality where there's uh, the eyes and they say, don't trust what your eyes see because your eyes don't see reality. You see what you've been conditioned to see. You see based on the speed of the frames of your eyes. I think we're at 24 frames per second for the human eye. But if you imitate a human eye with a camera their flash is much faster. As a result the camera picks up in this room different images than what your eye sees. So if you understand how your optics are working, I'm not an ophthalmologist or optic scientist but I give you a really basic understanding is it's a shutter on your eye. You're looking with a vision based on one, your, your preconditions, how you were raised, what do you think of this or what do you think of that, what you've been exposed to and then the speed in which your eye is opening and closing is how you see things. Well those creatures in the room they know the speed in which you see. So they move at a different speed and your eye doesn't even pick it up their movement. 
It's like they know the speed of the fan, they move at a much faster speed, your eye didn't even see their movement. They also stay away from your peripheral vision. So they, they stay away from your straight vision and they stay on the peripherals, on the outside of your vision. Because they know that you can only see so much as a front angle, you don't see behind here. So anything that's worried about your vision would be standing here, not in front of you where you would see them. So because they understand our physiology, they operate at a different reality. They can move faster than your eyes sees them and you wouldn't even see them moving in the room. That's why in the meditation and these jinn fighters they, they do different way of meditating and, and closing their eye vision to slow down their frames but that's something that's not advised and, and not, not of any interest to tariqah. But as far as understanding the eyes and what's happening as a result of them manipulating how we see and where they stand and, and all of our limitations. The mirror is something different because it just sees the truth, it doesn't have a shutter speed. So when your person stands and looks at a mirror and there's a big mirror, many things may reflect in the mirror that had nothing to do with your eye speed, right? So sometimes people can go to a mirror and they may see scary reflections behind them through the mirrors casting something. So it's not because it's in the mirror, trapped in a mirror, it's because it's reflecting things around you that maybe were trying to hide from your front vision and staying on your peripheral vision. So it has many different things. So when they look into a mirror sometimes they can see things that they were not meant to see. And in meditation if they want to understand their bad character they may try to meditate and just look at a mirror and, and see the horrific nature of what their ego looks like. But that's not advised either because there's many scary people on the email that they get scared very fast and that they, they're going to be frightened and… But just understanding the science of the mirror it's picking up things that our eyes have limitations on. And so many people are very uncomfortable with mirrors because of that. They see things in the reflection and, and different understandings inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How does the heart open and how long do we have to meditate for? How does the heart open and how long do we have to med meditate for? <laughs> yeah the meditation is a way of life. So this is more about not the heart opening but how to meditate, connect your heart at least five, six, seven minutes a day. Visualize yourself in the presence of the shaykh and then go through all the steps of the meditation to build the connection. And that's why we gave the talks on the mirrors of truth and, and watch those other talks so that you can meditate with the truth. That by making the connection and asking that, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with my character, what am I doing wrong? So that the presence of the shaykh is there, the fires and the lights and the emanation that are reflecting and also then the accounting that the shaykh begins to inspire the servant of Allah that this was done wrong, this character of yours is, needs to be fixed and all, all of the defects can be fixed when we're in front of the mirrors of truth. But if we just sit by ourselves, that's a mirror of falsehood in which the devil comes and says, you're the fairest one of all, you're good, you're great, don't worry about anything, you don't have to fix anything. And that's, that's you know, that's, a, that, that's also in a hadith of Prophet that the danger of shaitan coming to a servant and convincing them not to repent is a, is a big danger when the servant it allows a shaitan so close to them that the shaitan convinces them that you're so good you don't need to ever repent. What are these people always saying, Astaghfirullah? And that's a dangerous condition. So that's why the awrad has continuously, Astaghfirullah alazim wa tubu alaik, Astaghfirullah alazim wa tubu alaik. And then when they sit and meditate, 
Of course then the likes will begin to inspire in their heart, no, no you have a lot of things that you're not doing correctly according to what Allah wants. Not that we're going to achieve perfection but at least we should be working in the direction of perfection and not moving towards shaitan where he convinces us not to repent for anything, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Once dearest Sayyidi mentioned about penalizing oneself by giving, is it okay to give small sadaqahs every day with that intention like collecting an intended sadaqah every day in a till and giving it all at one time? Sure, you can do anything you want. You can have a box where every day you're supposed to give a sadaqah anyways in a box to prevent harm. So charity takes away calamity and this all Islamic understandings and usul and, and uh, fiqh everything. So every sadaqah takes away calamity so that every day if you give sadaqah then you're asking that this day to be a blessed day, protected days, protect me from accidents, calamities, sicknesses, difficulties. So this was the concept of sadaqah and then you take that box and donate to the poor, to the homeless, to the food programs, go, go give and buy some uh, food for people to, to give out. So all of these protect from calamity. So that's, that's good that you can have something and you can buy food and put a portion of the food every day aside as a sadaqah and at the end of the week distribute it to those whom are in need. All of those took away calamity and difficulties and hardships, inshaAllah. As uh, Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Are there any conditions for a person to have to give qurbani? The conditions of qurbani? That everyone is to, to give a qurban for the Eid al-Adha to their ability where they sacrifice what they can according to their means. That's why if they can sacrifice a lamb, they sacrifice a lamb, if they can sacrifice a goat, they sacrifice a goat, if they can sacrifice a chicken if they have the means to a chicken. According to whatever Allah gave people they should do according to what Allah gave to them. But if somebody has a lot and he wants to sacrifice a chicken he's going to have difficulties. So that's… that's we are people and amazingly different than our cousins. The cousins when they study religion they're… And that's why they all became lawyers. Their understanding of deen is to find a loophole. Now you be unverified, it's not something we're saying any, anything antagonistic. <laughs> this is the actual truth. When they go to study and in their schools of higher learning, it's the whole objective is to find a loophole. If God said this, go out now and who's the best student tell me where there's an error in it that we can find a loophole. So it's always trying to compete with the Word of God. So he says, give, okay well let me throw it up, what he wants he'll take, what he doesn't want I'll take back. Because he didn't take anything, you threw up money and it came back down to you then this is mine. So that's why you would see the dialogue in Qur'an. When he said, give, he said, why we give? He doesn't have like a loophole, right? When you come to them and say, give money and then they say, why we give money? Your God is poor? Why, why we have to give? He doesn't have? He has everything. But yeah, you're trying to find errors, this is not about that. It's not about Allah at all, He doesn't care about anything you, you have. He's, this, that's why we're teaching, this is a blessing for you. You want Allah to clean your hisab? Then He says, this, this qurban is of a tremendous blessing because He was asking for Ismail. And then Allah said, we exchanged because what I want you to achieve this maqam of iman that Sayyidina Ibrahim is teaching us and why also in Zulhaj it's very important to make salawat al-Ibrahimiyyah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad kun salati ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa la Ali Sayyidina Ibrahim Why? Because the father of this secret is Sayyidina Ibrahim where his many understandings and many realities is one of the stations of trudal being, that he's in charge of, of this station of angelic realities. 
And these stations that Allah wanted to bestow upon Sayyidina Ibrahim So the whole movement of the Hajj is from the reality of Sayyidina Ibrahim And as a result of what had to be achieved, so they sacrifice Sayyidina Ismail because it's not a small station. A whole life of giving and doing and everything and then at the end Allah was just saying, and more is sacrifice Sayyidina Ismail. And as He was about to give everything for Allah Allah said, we gave a tremendous ransom, means this maqam that I'm going to be putting you in charge of, it requires the sacrifice of everything, I'm now accepting the lamb as its penalty. So I'm happy with what you were trying to do and what you were willing to do and as a result this lamb will hold the weight of this reality that you were, you were supposed to achieve. So it's a tremendous blessing for the nation. Well, Allah's not telling us to slaughter our children and our, all of our possessions, it's just this goat will carry the burdens and the difficulties of where we came short. So it has an immense reality and it brings in the reality of who Sayyidina Ismail is and the reality of the light that he carries and, and the self-sacrifice that he represents. And that's why the salawat and Ibrahimiyyah in these 10 days is very powerful because Prophet wants us to take the dress of Sayyidina Ibrahim as salam. And by making this durood and making these salawats, we are asking the Sayyidina Ibrahim salam to dress us from these 10 days, dress us from its haqqaiqs, dress us from its realities and from what Allah bestowed upon your holy soul that to bestow upon ourselves, our families and our children inshaAllah. As Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, If one is living in US, Australia or Canada but can't afford to give qurbani here, is it acceptable to give it to our home countries instead? Wherever you give the qurban is the qurban, so that's alhamdulillah, wherever you can give the qurban, you give the qurban, inshaAllah. Uh, As-salamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah Would eating vegetarian raw foods help build up the energy faster? Uh, vegetarian raw foods mean like a vegan, no. Everything is in a, in, a, in a balance, it's not about you know a veganism, vegetarianism, it's not making a new, new thing. All the Prophets they ate meat, so you eat meat so that not to confuse yourself with being uh, uh, and, and idol worshippers and, and, and different people who are you know they're believing in the cow and, and drinking the, the products of cows but this is not, Islam is we are meat eaters, we're going to eat the cow. <laughs> so this is a, a sign of uh, you know we're following what the, the, the heavenly understanding is and everything in moderation. So not too much meat and every meat has its, its tajalli, too much chicken you become very picky. And uh, too much beef you become lazy, lamb has good characteristics and goat, I don't know why goat is so popular but you become like a goat which is quite mischievous on a farm. They hit everything, jump on everyone, they're all bouncing all over the place. So yeah, yeah, anyone eating too much goat then I can imagine, I don't know if you've ever been to a farm you see how naughty the goat is. He hits everything, he jumps on everything, he jumps into a tree, he's, he's hitting all the animals. But the lamb was the sunnah because the lamb is a very passive animal, very quiet animal, you will take on the characteristics. The, the cow is, is a bit big and grazing and, and lazy but a cow is a, is a western food that western people like. So alhamdulillah everything is in moderation and those animals are in existence for mankind to eat them and they be of service. And as a result Allah grants their miraj and the, the reality of their life, the way Allah wants to give them their reality is based on their sacrifice to humans. So they're not here as a, as a sort of entertainment purposes because the, the world would, Allah would have fashioned it with something else, He wouldn't have made the goats and chickens and cows. But He said that this is a meal for you, a sustenance for you 
and every time that you eat from them, they are giving a sacrifice and being raised. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.